Shortly after Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych fled Kiev on the night of February 21st and 22nd, a team of journalists converged on his lavish residence outside the capital. They found a trove of documents there, some floating on a lake, some underneath the water. They were able to save many of them, posting them on to a website called yanukovychleaks.org. Natalia Sedletska, a journalist on a fellowship with Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, is a member of that investigative team. She joins us now from Kiev. Uh, Natalia, you've just published an article regarding a member of the Yanukovych uh, security apparatus. Uh, what can you tell us about the documents you found on the grounds of the estate? We found uh, documents uh, by uh, head of security unit of Yano Viktor Yanukovych. His name is Konstantin Kobzar, and he uh, used uh, to live in the territory of a huge residence, Mezhihiria. He was living in a very small, uh, uh, very small, modest house there. But he has uh, a lot of he had a lot of documents there, and some of them uh, we found. So uh, the, the most interesting from that was uh, his diary his notepad and uh, uh, he was uh, writing down in this notepad many things uh, in December 2013 there are dates for that and uh, some of notes were really uh, 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 scary because it made a point that he and Viktor Yanukovych was involved in a, uh, in a, this awful story with Tatiana Chernovol uh, that uh, was beaten in a late December 2013. Let me explain you more about these notes. Some of them are saying that uh, 11 uh, o'clock in the, in the evening, uh, Tatiana Chernovol uh, comes to Maidan. And then one hour later, Tatiana Chernovol turns the phone off. And then 10 minutes later, Tatiana Chernovol turns the phone on again. And so that's so that means that they were spying on her, or at least they knew somebody who was spying on her, I guess. The most important thing was that it's just after a few sentences after they say that Tatiana Chernovol turned the phone off, uh, it says that operation started. And then it says one hour later, operation ended, clean. So, and the time and uh, dates more or less are the same uh, as this incident when Tatiana Chernobyl was hardly beaten uh, in suburbs outside of Kiev when she was coming from Maidan to her home. Can you, can you describe in more detail the attack that took place on the early morning hours of Christmas Day? Uh, what happened to Tatiana Chernobyl, who's a, a, an investigative journalist who had looked into the spending on the, the residence of Yanukovych? Sure. So it was the Christmas night from just 24 to 25th of December. And Tatiana Chernovol was not only a journalist, investigative journalist, but also activist and one of the main activists of Euromaidan, these protests in Kiev. She uh, left uh, Maidan uh, by her car and she was driving through Boris Pliska Highway. It's near Kiev. And then she uh, realized that she is uh, chasing, uh, cha that she is chased by uh, by a car and so she was trying to get away from them but this car was uh, was uh, crashing her car and finally after this uh, trying to get away she was stopped by these people there were three men in this car and uh, we saw a registration uh, um, a video that captured everything that was going on uh, uh, until the moment when they took her out of the car and uh, after that, uh, no video is available. But then people found her uh, on, on the street on this Borispolska highway, hardly beaten. And she was taken to a hospital. And she spent there a few weeks until she recovered, uh, thanks God. But she was very hardly beaten. And th she says that uh, these people from this car were ch chasing her. And now we have these notes in a notepad of Viktor Yanukovych, head of security service, saying, uh, pointing exact time of uh, when it happened. Now, your journalist team there has found some evidence of payments totaling millions of dollars, uh, some in cash. Uh, can you tell us more about what you found there? Uh, have you been able to trace where any of that money went? Well, so we've been able to work on 170 uh, folders of documents that's uh, a lot and uh, uh, within these do documents uh, we have a lot of stories coming out uh, 
some of them is about uh, very uh, ridiculously expensive luxury uh, buyings and purchases for uh, Mejihiria, for example, uh, one lamp that cost uh, 8 million euro. To buy all this, he had to take money uh, somewhere from. And uh, so uh, we think that docu we found documents that prove that he was paid by bribes in cash because there are hundreds of checks saying that this is a uh, income of 100,000 euros uh, by investor to the company that owns Yanukovych's Mezhigirya, his residence. So from now we are uploading everything online so everybody can see it. All journalists from around the world can have access to that and make their investigations and stories. And from this moment we start our team, Yanukovych Leaks, uh, uh, we start to make investigations uh, based on these documents. And I will uh, immediately and simultaneously publish my investigations to Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty. Natalia Sedletska, thank you very much for joining us today from Kiev. Thank you, Bruce.